Good morning everybody from New Hampshire. This morning we are going to an in-home consultation for a four and a half year old Catalina Macaw named Skittles. And I read the diet and almost died. <laughs> The synopsis was so bad, and I actually happened to read it a week and a half ago, and I kind of freaked out. So I uh, was like, let's hop on an online consult ahead of time. Now, they were sent diet information nine months ago. <laughs> Anyways, they were sent diet information a long time ago. They implemented the seasonal feeding, which wasn't in the synopsis. So okay. they do have the bird eating the seasonal feeding, but when I asked how consistent it was, they were like, yeah, we feed it to her, we take it out after a couple hours, and we're like, ooh, she didn't really finish it all, so we throw in a few Nutri Berries. <laughs> so we had a chat. What was the comment we got when uh, our host picked us up at the airport? They're like, wow, when we first watch you guys, you're intense. <laughs> Nobody's ever said that about both of us before. <laughs> You're gonna see how intense we can get. So my top concern today is just that they may have overfed and that we have really low food motivation. So I tried to make sure that they understood this and that we can go in because we only have one day for this in-home consultation. Normally we have multiple days on our in-homes. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I stressed on their consultation was we only have one day. We just got this one shot. However, they are coming to our master class later this week. So maybe we'll have a second chance. So Skittles is four and a half years old and he free feeds on just about everything, which is why we found it so paramount to have a consultation online before we met these guys in person. He's known for shoulder rushing and these guys have had some of the worst bites ever. Actually, the wife's very first bite was a bite that went down to the bone and it's just not a good situation. So we're here to see what we can do to help. Both the bites you just explained have been when you have stopped him from doing what he wanted to do. Okay, then step up and down on command. I'm gonna change your thought process to on request and stop thinking command, like, like you guys have two dogs. You tell it to sit, it doesn't sit, you're gonna tell it to sit harder, right? Birds, if it's like step up and you push harder to have them step up, you're gonna get nailed. Oh yeah. As you know. <laughs> I do, I do. So we'll start changing the mindset of like, Permission-based training is, yeah. is more of a request, and you're asking like, hey, do you want to step up? Yeah. And if it's like, no, then why not? And we'll pause, and we'll reassess, and we'll say, okay, here's here's what we need to do to get you to want, I know why, to get you to want to step up. You're avoiding behaviors yeah. rather than correcting behaviors. It is really difficult to correct a behavior of the bird. We can shape the things that they're naturally doing and make them in our favor, um, but it's best to avoid the unwanted while reinforcing and shaping more of what you do want. Okay. But like our birds, if we put them in the right situation, they'll tear us apart, right? But we just avoid those situations so that we get more of the fun, playful interactions that we desire, yeah. and we just avoid triggering those things that are they're there naturally for these birds. Yeah. We just we just avoid that that whole realm. So you just want to work on step up, step down, Dave. What's your goal? So yeah. So go ahead and. Do whatever you need to to set yourself up for success. And he'll step up. He might, he might, he not. Step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. Okay. Right to the shoulder. All right, let's get him onto the T-stand and deliver the treat on the T-stand. So I wanna point out that shoulder rushing in most cases is birds doing an avoidance behavior, which means they are trying to avoid something. Usually they're avoiding your hand. You can see here that he got nipped at, and if he keeps pushing, he's gonna get bit really hard. That was just a nice, hey, leave me alone. I don't want to come down. Most birds that shoulder rush are trying to avoid the human having control over where they go or where they don't go. Keeping a bird from shoulder rushing is all about your hand position. When you come in to a bird who's really up high and above you, it can be hard to read their body language anyway, then you don't have the bird necessarily step up in your hand in any sort of pocket, and the bird just sort of has free range. This is just a natural tendency. Even my birds will do this to me if I were to step them up the same way. If I picked up my birds the same way he picks up Skittles, I would also get the same results of a shoulder rushing bird or a bird going straight for my shoulder. It's all about your hand position, your arm position, and making the shoulder the easiest and most convenient spot to get to. When you don't do that with your hand position, you get a nice 
clean step up with a bird that actually stays on your hand area. But if you make the shoulder easy and accessible and it's the highest point and they can avoid and they can have all the control in the world up there, then yeah, of course the bird's gonna go up there. The most detrimental part of shoulder rushing is what happens once the bird is up there. Getting the bird back down can be so difficult and is usually not a pleasant experience for either the person or the bird. This is why we try to avoid it at all costs. Here we really see a struggle and the only way we see out of this situation without getting the human bit is for Dave to sort of increase his proximity to Skittles and make him just uncomfortable enough that he no longer wants to be on his owner's shoulder and he's willing to therefore step to the training stand of his own free will. You can kind of see Dave off to the left there for a second and this is the only way unfortunately that we can see getting Skittles off without getting anybody hurt or bitten in this yeah, moment. Almost, oh, oh you're almost you there. Yeah. Skittles. Give him a treat. Yeah. We take a moment to explain these differences that I've just been able to show you guys by taking some footage with our own birds and just showing you how easy it is to set your bird up to do the wrong thing on accident. And obviously they don't know that they're setting their bird up to do the wrong thing or the behavior that they don't want. So we have a little powwow about it and then we do another repetition to see if we can get a better step up. The problem is though, that there's a lot of history of being able to shoulder rush and having complete control once Skittles is up there. So we'll step up, so you do the quick, huh? lure, 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 lure back to the perch. We realize pretty quick that we are not set up to be successful with the interactions that we want to create between Skittles and his owner. <laughs> yeah, there you go. go. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Okay, so based on some of the things we talked about earlier, yeah. what would you change to set yourselves up for success with the tools we have available right here, right now? So we recognize pretty quickly with just two repetitions under our belt that this is not going well. <laughs> and we are somehow not set up to be successful in this environment. Now there is a lot of previous history, there's a lot of habits that have already been previously formed. And so with all of that comes a certain expectation from Skittles and his human. And we need to sort of shatter all of that and be able to have more of a clean slate. So Dave suggests going downstairs into a room that Skittles is unfamiliar with and seeing if that might change how his behavior is. The step up down in the basement is better as far as Skittles stepping onto the hand, but the arm is still at a height that makes it easy for Skittles to reach the shoulder very quickly. Yeah, come back down. Uh -huh. Step up. How do you how do you do that? There you go. <laughs> I really like you. <laughs> we try to set a bird up for success to the point where we don't have more than three failures in a row. Unfortunately with Skittles, no matter what we've tried to change, we've had three failures in a row. And it's getting exhausting not only for us, but also for Skittles. Skittles gets to a point where he just shuts down. Asking for step ups is just no longer happening. He's resorting to biting, even if it isn't super hard, he's not having it. And he's no longer a willing participant, which is really disappointing to us because it's said that we have not been able to set up an environment for him to be successful. It's okay, step up. Nice job. And let him take a bite. Perfect. Awesome. Yay. Yay. Good job. And we just did another right treat. Right? Yep. So he's probably almost totally full still. I know he hasn't had breakfast, but he was sustained enough by whatever he has had recently yep. that yeah, it's not really worth it for an almond. It was worth it for the Ritz. Cool? Yes. And your handling on that was so much better. Like you intuitively move to the right spots to just make everything work. So right now we know that what's working is the Ritz. We know that this tea stand is acceptable form. This room is working. Um, there's, there's a lot of things in our favor. You've got the handling is going a little better. I noticed he doesn't really trust the hand. Uh -huh. He wants to be closer to the arm. Yes. 
and we can we can fine tune that. Just try to get a little closer to your finger, you know, more to your hand over time. Um, but I would love it if we can get like three solid reps, like what you just did, yeah. and then give them a little break. Step up. Awesome. Pig. <laughs> Wanna step up? There you go. Ah. Ooh. Yeah. Awesome. Oh my god. That's, that's okay. Let's <laughs> either. You could see the enthusiasm difference between the beginning yep. and where we are now. You see the light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah. Cool. I, yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> you could tell he didn't even bother trying to go up your arm that nope. time. He was Not just like, cool, I know the drill. I'm going back down. This is worth it. Because he was waiting it. for the reward. Yep. Yeah. Come on. Step up. Uh -huh. Nice. Keep your hand like that. It looks awesome. I'll, him, I'll help you guys. Wow. Uh -huh. You're okay. Yes, you are. Perfectly yeah. done. So this is important too to look at the amount of reps and the quality of reps. So I told you like the reason I like to know what people do for a living is with our scientist friend, she was just a what person. Yeah. And so from her, we have to develop, do five perfect repetitions, right? So you had some where he didn't want to step up. Doesn't count as a perfect rep, you didn't do it, you reset. I think we got four, well we got three really good ones with the Ritz. For you, it's like, let's start with three perfect reps. Because then the fourth was up here. Right? Yeah, that's true. Um, most people have a tendency, like, they see the improvement, and they're like, let's do more! And then they, the bird burns out. Finally though, somebody suggests using a Ritz cracker. Apparently Skittles goes bonkers for Ritz crackers. And although, we would love to use nuts or seeds or something that parrots actually should be consuming in moderation for training. We don't really have a lot of choices here and we don't want to have any more fails with Skittles. So if we can use part of a Ritz cracker to have some success today and have a starting point, we're willing to do it. Eating the bird treats. <laughs> this is how they got us to listen. <laughs> For me, it's the basics, right? So the eating, the sleeping, the you know the things that we're doing wrong. I'm sorry. Not, so am I. Things we could do better to improve his life, right? So we certainly don't want a bird that feels hormonal all the time. And right. yet I've learned all of the things that we do tend to make him hormonal. And that is leading to a lot of behaviors that we don't want. So that was my biggest takeaway. My biggest takeaway is these are simple fixes. I can I can get him a sleeping environment, you know, that's fairly better, easy. Yeah. And I can um, change his diet to adapt. And I can, you know, stick to head scritches. Because I've been trained by a bird. So i got to unlearn a lot of that. And, I, and my biggest takeaway is pretty much what she just said as well. And the fact that the training session is don't have to be marathon long because there's a proof right there when he, he, he had enough and I hesitated he had no he didn't want any more so I didn't read that body language in time when I got bit and learning not to push so when you even though you want him to step up if he's not ready to step up to back off and get him on the head. that was uh, that was the cue mm -hmm. I hesitated yes you did so, so one was, of the things that you have uh, in your favor that most people don't get to experience is you have the in-home followed by a master class. Yes, which I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. When you got into birds, did you have any idea how complicated they would be? Nope, absolutely not. I mean, I knew they were, I knew they were at work, but I did not know that they were, and of course everybody knows they're really smart. Yep, everybody knows that. But they are extremely smart and they're manipulative and I've been trained, you know, and this is, trying to give him a better life. Yeah, and then in turn, we'll have a better life.